Aloha, Scott Sullivan Bell coming to you live from Sacramento, California, February 18th, 2017, 105 in the afternoon, perfect day to talk about sales. And the question comes up to me a lot because I understand body language is, why should salespeople be concerned about their nonverbal communication? And this is huge because, you know, you've always heard, and this is a good example of why this becomes important, you've always heard when somebody folds their arms, they're not listening, okay? Now that is a possibility, but I'm going to let you into my life. I have a back issue that I created with playing football in high school. I got tackled here and here and now I got back problems. But for me, if I'm sitting in a chair, I'm 6'2", and most chairs are made for people who are like 5'10", so they're very uncomfortable for me. So if I'm sitting in a chair, I typically fold my arms and lean back on the edge and it puts pressure on my lower back and it feels good, right? It allows me to listen because if I'm not sitting like that, then I'm like, my back hurts. But it allows me to listen and sometimes the people around will be like, hey, you're closed off because they've heard They've heard that through nonverbal communication picking up that if somebody's folding their arms, they're not listening, they're closed off, right? So this is why it matters. They could think that you're closed off. Now, I will let you know, I'm very transparent with my facial, <laughs> my, my facial features. When, when somebody says something and they think it's silly, you could tell like here very easily. It's not a question. It's not a guess. And so sometimes when somebody says stuff to me, I get a look on my face like, hey, silly, that's not a good thing to do. And then they react to it, and then I react to it, and then they react to it, and then I react to it. So there's all these elements. These people have these beliefs of like, this is what body language means, and this is what body language does. And then they see you do something, and it may not be true. It could be a generalization, and then for like 80% of the population it is, but for the 20% of you it's not, okay? Now, I will let you know, early on in my sales career, I did something that I shouldn't have, and it cost me a lot of sales. You know, I'm 6'2", 260 pounds. I'm, a, I'm like, I'm built like a linebacker. I'm a pretty good-sized guy. But if I'm sitting at a table with somebody who's small, you know, I was dealing with objections. I should be leaning back in my chair a little bit. But what I was doing, I was like leaning over the table, and I was what would have been considered aggressive body language, and I was losing deals because I was being aggressive. So as a salesperson, as a persuader, should you know about what your body is doing to present a message for body language, nonverbal communication, to influence a person? Absolutely. And one of the best ways for you to deal with taking a look at how to fix this is put yourself on video. And yes, I know it's absolutely uncomfortable to hear your voice because it sounds different on video than it does through your ear, okay? The other thing is, is to watch because sometimes your sales presentation is absolutely cringeworthy. And there's times where you're not answering questions of buyers and you're glossing over stuff and you can find where you're, you're not really dealing with an objection. You think that you're dealing with it, but you're not. So one of the best ways to, to take care of this is to go watch other salespeople if you can. Put yourself on video and watch your video presentation and look for the flaws and look for places where you could. You could. Could be creating some confusion. Doesn't mean that you are, but could. And make a good note of it and you're going to have to take some effort to make those changes. I used to use a lot of filler words like er, are, um, but I also had a speech problem where I couldn't say all my words and syllables the right way and it was used as a crutch. And I had to spend a lot of time on video and a lot of effort to get rid of that. And it wasn't easy, it wasn't comfortable, and I didn't want to hear my own voice, and I didn't want to watch my own video, and I didn't want to see what happened. But for the people who really want to be good at what they do, this is one of the best ways to do it. You should be able to pay attention to your nonverbal communication. You should be able to watch your body language and figure out how you can make your information more persuasive, how you could be more influential, and then you can go from there, okay? Now, if you could do a small favor for me, in the box down below, leave a comment, question, or story, that'd be fantastic. To the right, to the left, there's a subscribe button. You know what you gotta do, you gotta subscribe. And then last of all, you can send it out to all your friends via StumbleUpon, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Why not even LinkedIn? Scott Silvenbell. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Aloha.